Hey, what's up, everyone? We're back, and I typically do tutorials in Cubase. This is a different type of video. This is a video in defense of the DAW doodle. It's when you open up your DAW and you start messing around, and you end up with something like you heard today. Now, it may not be, you know, Thriller by Michael Jackson or Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd, but it is a piece of music that you write, and that happened to me today. I had no idea what I was going to make a video on. I opened up Cubase, I started screwing around, and I came up with this. And one of the things that I said to myself is, I've used Cubase for a long time, and I've never used Mystic or Spectre. And that piece you heard at the top of the video, actually, I used one of each of the included instruments in Cubase. So I use Mystic, Spectre, Halion, Sonic SE, Loop Mash, Pad Shop, Prologue, Retrolog, and Groove Agent. And I've used all of them before except for these two. And the interesting thing is if you look at these and then you combine it with Prologue, they all look pretty darn similar. And the design cues aren't necessarily modern. Uh, and this is not a tutorial on how to use Spectre and Mystic because I just sort of chose presets at random and writing this 30 second or one minute piece of music you know, it took me maybe 10 minutes, 20 minutes. So the DAW doodle, if you don't do it, maybe you should. And one thing I wanted to mention is that every synth in the world, basically, they'll have four types of presets almost without fail. And those are your plucks, your pads, your leads, and your basses. So it's like pluck, 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 bass, 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 lee, 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 Pad. So pads are basically for cording. Plucks can be for arpeggiation, arpeggiation or for cording. Leads are obviously melodic lead lines and basses. Well, that fills in the bottom end. And the reason why synths have those four types of presets is because with those four horsemen of the synth apocalypse, you can basically accomplish anything. Uh, from a songwriting perspective, you can fill out the whole frequency spectrum and uh, with a drum beat and a lead line on top of it, you got yourself a song. So that's what I did. Uh, I used Mystic. I found a pluck patch and sort of did an arpeggiated thing. And then I think I did a pad with Spectre, just like a long thing. And then Halion Sonic was just a uh, bass. And none of this was quantized. I, I wanted it to be sort of free flowing and loose. So we had these three. And then the drum beat was Loop Mash. And Loop Mash, if you've never used it, I do have a tutorial. I'll leave a link to it up in the corner. Uh, it's basically these pre-programmed loops that you can affect with performance controls, and that's what the MIDI is here. It's using the performance controls. So uh, you can hear the performance control come in, especially at the end here. So yeah, if you haven't checked out Loop Mash yet, you can. It's a nice way to sort of have loops in your compositions, but be able to affect them in real time with performance patches. So that was the main drum beat. So with a pad, a pluck, a bass, and a drum, we have... And then here in Pad Shop, I just added some additional pads. Sort of like a synth string type thing. And then prologue was another pluck, sort of to add a little bit of melody. So in context, that's... Uh... And you can hear that I made a mistake, it's not perfectly in time, but this was just a quick composition. Uh, Retrolog I used for a bass, and this right here, what you see is uh, affecting the cutoff and the panning at the same time I had them. So we can look at the panning here. Ba -ba 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 CC10. So this is panning uh, left and right, but this was also mapped on my quick controls to uh, what, whatchamacallit. 
filter cutoff here. <laughs> So this is just panning, and I don't you typically pan the base, but I just felt like doing it today because I was screwing around. And then the final thing was groove agent, and that's just the little uh, percussion things you hear. And this is the only thing I actually threw effects on because I didn't like the sound out of the box if we uh, mute the audio inserts. So I threw quadrifuzz and uh, room works and frequency. So I, this is a filter. I mean, nothing major, but. And in the context, it just makes these percussion hits sound a lot better. And that was how I put together this little uh, DAW doodle. And here's the thing about DAW doodles. Yes, they'll fill up your hard drive. You may not use them for anything. Fortunately, I have something to use them for. I use stuff like this that doesn't get sent to libraries, that doesn't get used in my musical projects on my YouTube channel as background music. Uh, so I have an outlet for it. And that's the cool thing about music. You can find an outlet for anything you do um, if you just continue to be creative. And the thing about doing this is I got a chance to see what Mystic and Spectre were about, sort of, just using some presets. Um, I tried all the instruments that were included with Cubase and I had a chance to just compose a little something in B minor and stuff like this, it may not end up being like your hit, but you can practice. I was practicing with the transpose track here. We can, you know, drop it a fifth or something. So. <laughs> So you can use opportunities like this with Daw Doodles to fool around with different instruments that you may have, whether it's the instruments included in Cubase or any of the other virtual instruments that you may own that are third-party virtual instruments. It's just, there's nothing wrong with it. And I don't feel like you should feel like you're being unproductive. I mean, there's a lot of things that you could do that are way more unproductive than writing a little piece of music. And you should not sell yourself short. You should have an outlet for your music because the piece of music that you may think so little of might be the one that resonates with a large group of people. You can never tell. And sometimes you're so close to your work that you don't know exactly how it's all going to pan out. So I guess the message for today is just experiment with all the instruments. Just make stuff and see how it goes. And it'll give you a better idea of where you need to go in the future and what you need to improve on and how to use the tools that you have. And that's all I really have to say for this week. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, feel free to like or subscribe and take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace.